This is the Acer Predator X34. It's a 34 inch 21 by nine ultra widescreen IPS curved monitor with G-Sync variable refresh rate technology from Nvidia built into it. It can also be overclocked up to 100 Hertz refresh rate. Many people, myself included, have been waiting for this confluence of features in a display, but is the $1,300 MSRP too much to ask for what Linus has already called the best gaming experience you could put on your desk? Granity says that a lot, but let's find out. Excellent. Mass Drop has a drop going on right now for the Ergotech Freedom Arm. It's a desk-mounted articulating monitor arm that supports up to 27-inch displays, allowing you full control over your monitor's position while using almost no desk space, as long as you've got a 100 by 100 or 75 by 75 VESA mount. Click the sponsor link in the video's description down below or go to dro.ps slash Paul's Hardware to find out more. I'm also gonna link Dimitri's Ergotech Freedom Arm review video on Hardware Connects down there because he did a really great job reviewing it. Once again, that's dro.ps slash Paul's Hardware and a big thank you to MassDrop for supporting my channel. Back to the Acer Predator X34 though, which has actually been available in limited quantities for about a month or so now. Although I have been told that there will be a wider release with more retail units available around December 12th. This afforded me the opportunity to go over some of the other reviews that are out there before I did my review, including Linus's on Linus Tech Tips, as well as Jay's Two Cents and Joker Productions, as they all managed to get their hands on a Predator X34. Links to all three of those videos are also down in the description, and while you're down in that area, don't neglect that like button. It gets so lonesome sometimes. One final note before we get into the meat of this video, in the interest of full disclosure, is that this monitor was provided to me by NVIDIA for this review. I am, of course, extremely thankful to them for that, but at the same time, I promise all of you that this fact will not affect my opinions or how closely I scrutinize the Predator X34. At first glance, the X34 definitely has that edgy look that manufacturers seem to associate with PC gaming, which I guess must work because they keep doing it. Acer keeps things pretty tasteful though, in my opinion, with a couple dark red color accents on the logo and the stand being the blingiest thing on there. Uh, at second glance though, you will find that there is also this underglow light when you turn it on, uh, which is also blingy, but also pretty cool. Uh, it can do five different colors, red, green, blue, a yellow, orange, or goldish color, and white. Uh, it's very nice again, but I would love to see full RGB support added, maybe in a future firmware update. The stand itself is made of metal, uh, steel actually, and it has a very helpful handle up at the top, uh, cable management hold down at the bottom with the red accent, and very wide pointy feet that do take up a lot of desk space, but uh, it makes up for that by being a very solid stand with a good amount of height control as well as tilts. Uh, to swivel, you simply lift and move the whole stand, um, which is works, but it's not very convenient. And for the first time ever, I'm able to say when I'm looking at a monitor stand that you don't need pivot. It's just not needed. Setting this thing up vertically would pretty much be pretty silly. Anyway, the back of this monitor is black glossy plastic, which should never be used on anything. But at least I don't have to look at it since it's gonna be the part that faces the wall. Uh, a 100 by 100 base amount is back there. Good work, Acer, on that. And for the pluggy area, there's your AC power plug, Kensington lock, headphone jack, which is not really conveniently located, but it does give you an option for audio aside from the built-in speakers, which are seven watts and okay for monitor speakers, if that means anything. Uh, there's a four port USB 3.0 hub back here too, which is nice to have, I guess. Again, it's not really conveniently located. Some of you might like it for routing a keyboard and mouse through, but uh, given the choice between that USB 3.0 hub and a lower price on the monitor, I would have gone for the lower price for sure. Finally, for inputs, there is a familiar and comforting full-size DisplayPort 1.2 connector and an HDMI port, which I just assumed would be HDMI 2.0, but I was actually kind of disappointed to learn is only 1.4. You can still get the full resolution uh, with HDMI 1.4, but you're limited to 50 hertz uh, refresh rate, or 60 hertz if you overclock it a little bit. It's nice to have that as a second input, but I just would not use it for gaming. The screen is 34 inches diagonal with a matte finish, uh, 21 by nine aspect ratio and 3440 by 1440 resolution. That's 4.95 million pixels for those of you who are doing math. So you're gonna need a $500 plus graphics card to get reasonable frame rates while gaming on this monitor. Presumably if you're willing to spend 1300 on this monitor, then you're gonna be okay with that. But it is uh, still a bit less taxing than 4K fortunately, which is about 8.3 million pixels for comparison. I would also have to assume that you'd be getting or already have an NVIDIA graphics card like a 980 or 980 Ti to go with this because this monitor has G-Sync, which is ma uh, matches the FPS output of your graphics card with the monitor's refresh rate, makes everything really smooth, and it only works with NVIDIA GPUs. 
If you're going for an AMD card, well, there is the Acer XR341CK, which is nearly identical to the Predator X34, except it doesn't have a cool Predator name. It tops out at 75 hertz instead of 100, uh, and it features FreeSync support instead of G-Sync, so it works with AMD. It can be found for less money, though, about $1,100 as of the filming of this video. Uh, 200 bucks more for this one? It's Maybe for maybe they bend the panels and the 100 hertz panels, you know, they value more. I don't know. That's my guess. Now, I'm not going to argue the finer points of FreeSync versus G-Sync in this video, but I will say that in either case, once your eyes have tasted the sweet nectar of variable refresh rate technology, no other drink will ever sate their thirst. The bezel is very thin, but the display is inset just a bit. I'm actually pretty used to this with monitors by now. They've been doing it for several years with all brands, it seems. Uh, it is shown pretty clearly in Acer's product photos where the screen actually ends and the bezel begins, but just an FYI for anyone who was really expecting an edge-to-edge -edge screen on this one, it's, it's not that. Finally, you've got the curve. Uh, it is less curved than some other monitors I've seen out there, but actually I think it's pretty ideal, and this is coming from someone who really doesn't like curved televisions. Depending on how close th uh, you sit to them, the far corners of ultra-wide monitors in particular can start to taper away at the edges of your field of view, more significantly than a 16x9 screen like a 1080 or 4K. The X34's curve compensates for that tapering without being noticeable when you're sitting at a comfortable distance and I just liked it. I thought it worked well. It wasn't a distraction for me. And lastly, there is a blue light reduction mode that you can enable called Acer Eye Protect. That is all for the specs and features of the Predator X34 though. Let's actually put it through some tests and real world usage. So the first thing I wanted to do was go ahead and enable that 100 hertz mode. The monitor actually ships at 60 hertz and overclocking it to 100 hertz is something that you do via the on-screen display. You enable that mode, the monitor does a quick reset, and then you can go into uh, your Windows display settings and turn up the 100 hertz mode. Using the Blur Busters website, you can go ahead and check and make sure that you're actually achieving 100 hertz. Fortunately, my monitor was able to hit that just fine and I have had no issues running at this refresh rate ever since I enabled it. Next up, I wanted to look at uh, the color range as well as banding and black light bleed. Uh, this is a little bit subjective because I don't necessarily have the color calibration tools to go on top of the monitor to get proper readings, but I can tell you that this will achieve 100% of the uh, sRGB gamut, which is very nice. That's thanks to it being an IPS monitor with excellent color depth. Uh, fortunately, I also had no color banding across mine, which is another issue that came up on some of the forums. Uh, the transition between colors appeared nice and smooth to me. I do have a bit of black backlight bleed uh, and inconsistency though. It's along the top right and the top left of the monitor when I'm looking directly at a black screen. And this is an issue that's been reported with quite a few different monitors. Now, I've definitely seen worse, but I've definitely seen better when it comes to blacklight bleed as well. And this being a very expensive monitor, I was a little bit disappointed with that. Fortunately, it's really not noticeable except when you're looking at a very black screen and as I was playing through games and not concentrating on looking for that, it, it never really came up as something that was strongly noticeable. I had to play some games, of course. This is where the monitor really shines. It is a gaming monitor with G-Sync and especially, especially if the game actually supports 21 by 9 but not all games do. Grand Theft Auto V is one that I've uh, probably spent the most amount of time playing on this monitor just because it supports it pretty natively. I didn't really have any issues. Uh, the UI is shrunk down a little bit and still in 16x9 mode, mode, but it was just fine. Uh, another game that I got recently that I was really excited about is StarCraft for PvP purposes. That's limited to 16x9, so you are going to be hit and miss as you're looking for games to play. Some games that are 16x9 are still going to run, but you're just going to be looking at black bars on either edge of the screen or you're gonna have to go in and fiddle with some INI settings or something like that to get it to actually run at 21 by nine. When 21 by nine is supported, combining that with G-Sync as well as the IPS color depth here leads to just an amazing, fabulous, and wonderful gaming experience. That point I would like to drive home because I know I've been trying to like show you guys all of the potential negatives with this monitor for anyone who's really considering dropping that 13 hundo on it, but I, I gotta come back to that over and over again. The gaming experience on this when everything's working right is absolutely amazing. I also had the chance to use this monitor for some streaming, so gaming and streaming at the same time. Um, one thing that I will say is that when you're gaming at 21 by nine, I used OBS to just capture the 16 by nine portion of the screen for streaming. That worked just fine. That was using a secondary monitor. If I was using just a single monitor and I was stuck with a 16 by nine game, what I would actually do is play it in windowed mode so you still have some screen real estate on either side. And my idea was to pull up maybe your Twitch chat or maybe like your Twitch or your YouTube UI, have that off to the side so you can kind 
kind of keep an eye on, on the same screen while you're gaming. It's a good use of the space when you can't use it otherwise. For non-gaming scenarios such as photo and video editing, the color depth is also fabulous to have. Uh, don't rule out movie watching as well though. The ultra wide screen is much more akin to the letterbox uh, aspect ratio that you get when you're watching films in the theater. Uh, just bear in mind that most movies that you can get via Blu-ray or DVD are 16 by nine aspect ratio. So you're gonna need to look for your own source material and you're probably gonna need to look for a, a software playback player such as VLC that can handle removing black bars, cropping and adjusting aspect ratio. And finally, I tried to get some actual work done by firing up Adobe Premiere and checking out video editing on this monitor. This is a serious contender uh, for ultra wide versus say, if you're using two or three monitors in a multi-monitor configuration right now, which is really great for productivity. I personally still like multi-monitor, but Jay, for example, has ditched his three monitor, or maybe even four monitor setup just for this single display. Um, yeah, it's kind of up to your preference, but I will say that being able to put stuff side by side on here to look at, you know, web page on one side while doing something else on the other, whatever you want to do for your multitasking uh, is fantastic. And it is a serious contender and an option for those of you who have been working with multiple monitors. Now, before I move into the conclusion parts, I need to make note of what seems to be some ongoing quality control issues with the Acer Predator X34. I only experienced these when it comes to the backlight bleed, which was, again, a little bit disappointing, but not a game breaker for me. Others have had not as good of experiences though, and I found this via a, a review posted on Newegg, like literally yesterday, uh, ongoing complaints on the Acer forums, uh, as well as some of the other review sites that I looked up that I don't recall right now, but those are linked in the description down below if you want to check them out. I found a range of issues that had been reported. Some of them were minor, some of them were really issues that I personally would not live with if I had just dropped $1,300 on a monitor. Fortunately, Acer is very active on their own forums, and for people who are experiencing uh, game breaking issues, they are reaching out to them to work with uh, replacements and, and that kind of thing under the monitor's warranty, which is three years from Acer, so bear that in mind. Uh, some folks were having issues with color banding across uh, the monitor, especially when they're watching, looking at some of those gradients. Um, there were some issues with some of the build quality as far as the construction down here along the edges. I also saw some people complaining of electrical noise or coil whine, although I have uh, experienced none of that here. Again, the backlight bleed issue was the only thing that really popped up as something that I was uh, less than happy with. Bearing all that in mind though, let's move to the conclusion. I'm gonna do a cons list and a pros list, and uh, let's, I like to remove the band-aid first. So let's start off with cons, and the first obvious con is, oh my god, the price. Uh, there are definitely other cost-effective 21 by nine options out there uh, other than the Acer Predator X34. Not all of them have the exact list of features that this one has, so I think that's why Acer feels like they can price it at the price point that they have. And just to point this out, these are sold out everywhere. So clearly people are buying them even at that price. So we'll leave it at that. Next up was the overclock speed. Uh, I didn't quite understand why they didn't just ship it at 100 hertz rather than uh, starting it at 60 and having you overclock it yourself. Maybe that has something to do with warranty issues or anything. Uh, Jay mentioned this one as well, but uh, I already kind of noted my theory that uh, they're binning the panels and they're using the ones that don't overclock as much for the FreeSync version and the better overclocking ones for this one. Just a theory, but uh, Wanted to throw it out there. Uh, 21 by nine game support is definitely a con just in that not all games support it and some games you're just stuck. Other games you have to go through some, leaping through some hoops in order to get that to work. Uh, I would say it would be nice to have the HDMI 2.0 on there to have that versatility and flexibility for multiple display connections. Jerry, I know you've been having some issues with those two display connection options recently, although not with this particular monitor. Uh, the on-screen display menu is pretty bad and just confusing. Uh, it's, it's hard to navigate around. Once you figure it out, it's, it's usable, but it's still pretty bad. Uh, the black glossy plastic on the black back, I don't like it. I'm glad I don't have to look at it. Uh, I would love to see more colors on the underglow light and then the aforementioned quality control issues, which again are hit and miss. Let's move on to pros though, because there's definitely some really big pros, even though I think the actual list is shorter. So first off, just 34 inch, 21 by nine, 34, 40 by 14, 40 is pretty freaking amazing. It's just a beautiful balance between the size of the display and the resolution. Even simple things like the icons being like the reasonable size and that kind of thing. 100 Hertz G-Sync is also pretty amazing combined with those first things that I mentioned. Uh, I have not done extensive side by te side testing of like 100 Hertz versus 144 or something like that. But just subjectively, I do not notice much of a difference when you're, especially with G-Sync, between 100 and 144. And I would say that I will take 100 Hertz IPS over 144 Hertz TN 
any day, but that's because I like color depth. Uh, also the curve, I think they did a really good job with. It's a pretty ideal level of curvature without being overdone. Uh, and it is definitely more appropriate to curve a 21 by nine monitor than a 16 by nine. The matte finish is beautiful. I would have hated a glossy finish on this. It's still somewhat glossy, but it's mostly matte. And then of course you got that IPS color gamut, 100% sRGB, wide viewing angles, which is also nice for uh, a, a curved monitor. And and yeah, that's that's a pretty good list of pros, I think. And let's finish off with some final closing thoughts. First off, the price. Yes, it is very high, but I will point out that there is a market for these because they're sold out everywhere. Um, I don't know, take that for what it is. Quality control issues definitely suck and it was disappointing to read some of those as I was doing research for my review on this monitor. Fortunately, I didn't hit those too bad, but I would definitely recommend if you're gonna buy this, buy from somewhere that has a good return policy. If they charge a restocking fee when you return it, you might want to reconsider because that's a 15% of 1300 is pretty expensive. Some places like Newegg, you can call in and like talk them into waiving it. Anyway, I'll leave that in your hands. Finally, you probably want to know if I would buy this myself for $1,300 since I already mentioned that uh, this came over from NVIDIA. I would say no, but I'm not their target market. I don't typically spend this much money on a display, for example. The last display I bought that was a big investment for me was the $700-ish that I spent on my Yamakasi Leonidas, which was two and a half years ago. Uh, but if you're seriously thinking about this monitor and you have the money, and the cons don't deter you. You're in for an amazing, amazing gaming experience. I have to keep referencing that. And hopefully now you will know what to expect when it comes to the pros and the cons. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button. Use my Amazon link if you're doing any shopping for gifts or whatever else right now. Uh, you can feel free to visit my store at store.paulsharbor.net where you can support me by picking up a shirt like this one or I also have mugs and pint glasses over there. Subscribe to the channel for more tech videos. And as always, Thank you for watching.